Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Tuesday, November 10th, and from an update on a potential COVID-19 vaccine to what's ahead for the Affordable Care Act, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, I want to get you all up to speed on the latest coronavirus data from the state. Today, there were 6,508 new cases of COVID-19 reported in the last 24 hours. The 21-day average is 3,612. There were 23 deaths reported compared to the average of 22, 386 hospitalizations compared to the average of 174, and 39 ICU admissions compared to that 21-day average of 23. Daily case numbers are up 1,500 from the record we just set last Friday, and hospitalizations have reached a new high, breaking 300 for the first time. ICU admissions are also creeping up higher and higher, although not breaking a record this time. The highest 24-hour ICU increase was set back in April with 42 admissions reported in a single day. But the focus here really has been on hospitalizations. Leaders with the Ohio Hospital Association hopped on a Zoom call yesterday, practically begging Ohioans to take personal responsibility in how they're handling the virus, and not just for themselves, but for the healthcare workers. They said hospital capacity is reaching maximum levels, but this time it's not for material reasons like bed space or PPE. It's due to a lack of trained personnel as hospital employees continue to get sick or are stuck in quarantine. And they generally aren't getting sick at work. The Ohio Department of Health's new Chief Medical Officer Bruce Vanderhoff said it's getting harder and harder for them to avoid the virus in the communities that they live in. They reiterated a point that we've heard countless times from Governor Mike DeWine that spread isn't occurring so much in formal spaces like schools or even restaurants, but in private gatherings where rules aren't strictly followed, which is why, when asked if a second stay-at-home order would be effective, most of the leaders on the call agreed that legislating that behavior likely wouldn't do the trick. Instead, they encouraged people to stick to the basics like social distancing, hand washing, mask use, etc., even when around close friends and family. And on that note, they told people to try and stay within their bubble of people. DeWine canceled today's coronavirus press conference and instead will be holding a primetime address tomorrow at 5.30, which we will, of course, be streaming here on YouTube and on our Facebook page and on WTOL.com. But health officials on yesterday's call were really optimistic in the progress being made on a potential COVID-19 vaccine, which once approved will drastically change the conversations we're having about the pandemic. Yesterday, Pfizer announced that its COVID-19 vaccine may be 90% effective based on early and incomplete test results, which is a lot better than what experts initially expected. Dr. Bruce Aylward, the World Health Organization's senior advisor, said Pfizer's vaccine could fundamentally change the direction of this crisis by March, which is when they hope to start vaccinating high-risk groups. And Dr. Jesse Goodman, the former chief of the FDA's vaccine division, called the partial results extremely promising, but said there are still a lot of questions they need answered, like how long the vaccine's effects last and whether it protects older people as well as it does younger people. So while this is a major milestone, there is still a lot of work to be done. Pfizer initially chose not to join the Trump administration's Operation Warp Speed, which helped fund half a dozen vaccine makers' research and manufacturing. Pfizer instead invested $2 billion of its own money into the project. But back in July, Pfizer did sign a contract to supply the U.S. with 100 million doses for $1.95 billion, assuming the vaccine is cleared by the FDA. And the Supreme Court heard arguments today surrounding the Affordable Care Act, or what some people refer to as Obamacare. And right now, the court seems likely to keep most of it intact, including protections for pre-existing health conditions and subsidized insurance premiums that affect tens of millions of Americans. Today, Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Brett Kavanaugh seemed unwilling to strike down the entire law, even if they were to find the law's mandate for obtaining health insurance to be unconstitutional. The court's three liberal justices are very likely to uphold the entire law and presumably would form a majority by joining a decision that would cut away only the mandate, which now has no financial penalty attached to it. Congress zeroed out the penalty in 2017, but left the rest of the law untouched. For his part, Kavanaugh said recent decisions by the court suggest that the proper remedy would be to sever the mandate and leave the rest of the act in place. President-elect Joe Biden delivered a speech on the Affordable Care Act this afternoon, just hours after the Supreme Court heard those arguments, noting that twice already the court voted to uphold that law. And today is the 45th anniversary of the sinking of the freighter Edmund Fitzgerald and the loss of her 29 crew members back in 1975. A virtual ceremony was held online in commemoration of the event and to honor all of the lives lost in Great Lakes shipwrecks. And if you didn't know, the captain of the Edmund Fitzgerald, Captain Ernest M. McSorley, was Canadian by birth, but lived in Ottawa Hills. And other local crew members included Eugene Great Lakes gambler W. O'Brien, 
Robert C. Rafferty, and William J. Spangler, all of Toledo, Ralph G. Walton of Fremont, Russell G. Haskell of Millbury, and Thomas E. Edwards of Oregon. A new blackberry sour beer called Gales of November is being canned today from Ernest Brew Works, paying tribute to the 29 men who were lost. The beer will be released at 2 p.m. on Saturday in the Ernest Brew Works tap room. But let's end things on a more uplifting note today. We're getting closer and closer to the lights before Christmas. It's kicking off in just 10 days, so I'm excited. But you can vote for the zoo right now to win the title of Best Zoo Lights Nationwide. Vote now through December 7th at noon. And as of today, Toledo is in second place, so we are so close. The top 10 will be announced December 18th, and I have a link for you to vote in the description of this video, so check that out. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.